Hey, how's it going? It's Alex with Detroit Moped Works. Um, we got this ZA50, which is in extremely poor condition, so we're gonna be taking it apart. Uh, well, before I take it apart, I'm gonna check this ignition for spark. So I'll quickly go over with you guys how to check for spark on um, mostly any bike. Uh, specifically, this is a large taper Bosch that you'll find on these Pook ZA50s, uh, as well as a Pook E50, as well as a uh, number of Badavises, Solos, Socks, and whatnot. So, um, so we're gonna start with that. Uh, I guess first thing I'll show you guys is just how terrible these cases are. It appears that whoever was trying to get the top end off mangled all of this aluminum, so you're not gonna get a good seal there. Additionally, they mangled the crank. You can see it's very bent there. Um, so I'm gonna be a little bit casual and sloppy with the cases and the crank because it doesn't matter because it's already been trashed. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is just check to see if the uh, points even open. So I'm going to be looking for top dead center, which when you pull the crankshaft out all the way is going to be the top. And then you can see in here your contact points. You can see them opening and closing there. Um, a little, little bit opening and closing there. That means that they do open and close. So, and they're actually not too dirty when you look in there. Um, you probably want to file them before running them, but again, I'm just checking to see if it works. So now that we know that the crankshaft turns and that your points open and close, I'm going to come over to the wiring harness on it. Um, with Definitely with all of the pooks and with a number of these other large taper Bosch, what you're going to be looking to do is to get a ground out of your blue wire that's got the black stripe on it. Um, the stock wiring harness has this running up through your horn and back, so you might find that on a pook moped sometimes you lose spark. Um, and the reason that you've lost spark is because you have a bad ground and that's because of a malfunctioning horn or horn switch. So a lot of times on the bike, um, I'm gonna go ahead and just bypass that so that I know that the problem isn't my horn or whatever um, preventing me from getting spark. So today I'm going to be, I don't have the stuff in circuit, but what you're gonna be trying to do, you know, again, is to ground this black with the blue. I've made this, well, made, cut this little wire here and I'm going to, ground it to the motor. Now you can ground it to the frame or any place on the motor. Uh, today, this just happens to be what what we have and what we're working with. Um, but again, your goal is just to get a good solid contact, some kind of bare metal, um, which eventually leads its way back to the motor cases. Uh, like I said, in today's example, we actually just get to use the motor cases because that's all we've got. Um, Got that. I tighten it down here so I'm getting a good contact. Um, I'm just using this a lot of times, a convenient place to do it. If you just have a motor, would be to your intake. A lot of times your intakes have got M6s and you can ground right to them. You also can ground it to the frame. Um, on the E50, there's like a little tab here with the slot you could ground to there. Uh, really just anything that can get you a nice solid um, circuit going back to the motor cases. So. I'm using the stock wiring block to get into here, so just putting my wire in there. Um, I recommend finding your favorite little teeny screwdriver. Little teeny screwdrivers tend to break if you're not careful with them, um, but everyone has their favorite that seems to have lasted them a long time. Mine is this wooden one. Um, so the rest of these things, these greens are going to be part of your uh, brake light circuit. The gray is your tail light, the yellow is your headlight. We're not worried about that today, we're just worried about checking for spark. Um, you could use this wire directly, but I'm connecting it to the wiring block just to keep everything in order. So I'm shoving this wire, loosen her up a little bit, shoving this wire here in circuit um, with my blue ignition wire. And again, I'm using a black wire with this little tip on it, just because that's what I have. Um, could be any color, doesn't need a tip, just needs a wire connecting there with some metal. Um, let's see how, let's see how strong this is. I can actually, I don't know if the camera's able to see it. Getting a little bit of spark off it, just spinning it by hand um, for a better visual. I'm going to spin it with a drill. Um, 
as I mentioned earlier, you would not want these crankshaft, the crankshaft to be slapping around or hitting the cases, but I'm just doing that because it all needs to be gotten rid of anyways. Uh, another cool toy that I recently bought that I'm going to show off is this low voltage circuit tester from Treatland. Uh, they're sold out because I bought it, but for only $6 when they come back in stock, you can uh, use this. And it's kind of cool, instead of having to, you know, rub it on the metal and make that little jump and look for the spark visually that way, you can actually just um, clip this thing on any old thing and use this to make your contact. And in there, hey, and in there you'll find there's a little uh, light which will illuminate um, when the circuit is being passed through. So. You know, again, you don't want to be having this crankshaft slapping back and forth, but if you've got a cylinder on there, it's not going to be slapping around, or if you've got a buddy with some extra hands, you can kind of hold it from flopping all over. But that is sort of the process of what you're looking for. Checking for spark is basically going to be just grounding your blue-black and then getting your solid blue ignition wire um, to show spark anywhere from that wire back to the cases, and that's what spark looks like. And so I know now this is a good ignition. I'm going to take it off of here and label it as a good ignition for someone to buy or for us to use on a future build or, or whatever we use it for. Because again, this motor is not, not going to be usable um, at all, not even rebuildable due to these cases. So, all right. Thanks for listening. Hopefully this was helpful and we'll see you on the next video.